Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to the first ever live stream for my channel. And today I have got a few rackets to string. Um, so I'm going to take you along this journey um, and watch this live stream. So, you know, um, use the chat for the questions. If you have any questions, just list them down in the chat below. Um, and yeah, to, to kick it off, I'm, I'm going to start by showing you my machine. Let me try and turn the camera down. Yeah, so I've got my machine here and we've got we've got two rackets going so they are the victor jet speed s10 today and we're going to be stringing them and let's go okay so first off um, if you have any questions as i said before just listen down in the comment section below in the chat box below and i will catch them i will look at them and i'll answer try and answer your questions so here i'm going to mount the racket um, I've checked the rackets when I have unstrung, um, taken the strings off, and so they haven't got no no damage whatsoever. And now making sure that the rackets are mounted properly. And this is a six-point mounting machine, so they protect the rackets pretty well. They are, I guess, they are now the in industry standard um, everywhere you go around the tournaments all around the world you should see high-end six-point machines so obviously the more expensive machines you tend to get better ergonomics um, and feel you know so however obviously I'm not stringing it at the very top end tournaments in the world um, I've got this and the string that we'll be, we'll be using today will be the Yonex BG66 Ultimax um, and we'll be doing it at 26 pounds on the mains and 28 pounds on the cross. So here I'm gonna unfold the string. So here obviously you can see the string that comes in a pack that's around 10 meters. Um, if you string a lot uh, you should use a reel. So a reel should have 200 meters, but obviously because you don't use fully uh, all the time, by 10 meters of string, you will have slightly more excess string, which means you will be able to string more rackets, typically 21, 21 and a half rackets before you finish a reel. Um, so obviously this pack belongs to a friend, and so um, he's given me it as a pack. Yep, so I'm gonna start with the mains so generally I uh, start with the mains um, I don't pre-weave any of the rackets um, because pre-weaving I believe it takes out uh, so when you're tensioning it does take out some of the tension and they're not true tensions so when you're stringing it's not all about the speed it's more about for me it's more about the accuracy and I prefer it to be accurate so obviously I've set the tension on the tension head to be 26 pounds and so you can see you can actually hear that there is tension on the string there we go it's the first one and then weave on the mains a few strings ahead save myself a little time oh uh, good tip so here because the end of the tip is pretty pretty flat um, I cut it down to make sure it's sharp oh hi Alan good to see you streaming in so, yep, so we have a proper master stringer <laughs> that's actually watching the stream. Um, so Alan Kakanami, he is a super famous, super amazing stringer. I'm giving you a shout out, Alan, um, AK. So yeah, hopefully you can see this fine. And I tend to check if there are any slippage there we go. Hi Mars, how are you? Good to see you joining us. So here I do three, three main strings ahead before 
going on to the other side. Nice. Yes, AK, join us. <laughs> you should also do a live stream too sometimes. Uh, we'll be able to pick up a thing or two from you. Yep, let's make sure that's tight. So repeat the same thing, so slightly weave. I weave a few for the mains. before tensioning them. And go back and do three more, just to get it even and balanced. Obviously, if you're using a much higher end machine, um, they're probably quieter as well. <laughs> so the racket, um, hello Gautam. Yes, so the racket that I'm stringing here is the Victor Jet Speed S10 um, using VG66 Ultimax string. And my friend, he liked it at 26 pounds on, on the mains and 28 pounds on the cross. So now that I've got four main strings on each side, so I will then do alternate. I'll alternate between them just to make sure that they're even. So I think sometimes you might see stringers doing one side of the racket completely uh, before coming back to do the others. Yeah, that might not be the best thing to do because there'll be a lot of pressure on one side of the racket nice ah oh, yeah oh AK you didn't think that the X Bolt 63 felt good um, yeah I mean in my last test you, you certainly saw in my video um, that I thought the X Bolt 63 played really well for me um, however I do feel that they're not as forgiving as uh, there are usual other strings, so for example, like this, um, the 66 Ultimax, they're not as forgiving on the Xbox 63. Um, anything that is off-center, yeah, you do, you do suffer a little bit more. Um, but then, if you catch it right, they sound amazing. Oh, wow. Um, let me catch on. Yeah. I can't read any... Oh, hello. How is it important to... Bottom top additional string holder. Oh yes, so aha, I'm not on the string. Dynamic tension. Yes, so this is a. Oh, I actually forgot what's it called. Um, I think what's that? Uh, yes, they are called the load spreaders. Um, yes, so I think the load spreaders are really important um, because obviously here you can actually see this is a five prong load spreader on both on both the top and the bottom, uh, north and south towers. Um, if not otherwise, the, all the force and stress off the frame is going through um, directly on this each point. So I, I certainly really, I swear by them really, um, I really think they are really important. So I use them on every single racket of mine. Um, I used to have a separate set for um, rackets which had, for example, like the Forza 96 holes racket they won't fit in the five prong ones so I had to saw them down to a three prong because of how dense the string holes are um, but yeah they're really good and and I think they're really important uh, have I tried further until dot string in with dynamic range of tension per string well so I think um, over the years I have experimented with a lot of different different types of stringing patterns and stuff like that and I generally find the what the manufacturers recommend do work really well. Um, I think it depends on the it depends on how adventurous um, the customer is, or if it's your own racket, then that's absolutely fine. It depends on how how adventurous they are with their rackets, and uh, if they don't mind, for example, doing um, the dynamic proportional stringing um, 
then that's absolutely fine. I generally tend to experiment more with different types of string. Um, so for example, before the hybrid like Aerobyte strings came out, I was already stringing with, for example, um, a thicker strings on the mains and then much thinner strings on the cross. Um, well, hello Felix, um, where do you get my logo? Oh, okay. Um, so if you actually check out on my channel, there are quite a lot of stringing resources there and then I tend to get, um, I have a description in the in most of my videos to actually say uh, where I get my load spreaders from. Um, they're easily available um, all around the world sometimes if you actually just Google um, where you get the load spreaders from. I think I have a video that actually uh, talks about the essential tools that we need for stringing. I'm sure there's a description in there on that video. But good question. And then obviously you, you guys can see I have actually inserted uh, two little pieces for string, especially now that I'm skipping some of the holes here on the rackets. So that will help me later down um, when I'm almost finishing the cross to stop pulling my hair out. Um, so here obviously I am going to skip another string. Hopefully the camera will pick up a little, a little bit better. So I'm going to insert that just to help me go along. Yep, eBay works, <laughs> absolutely. And they're not expensive, so if you're coming across, coming across them for tens of dollars or tens of pounds or whatever currency that you're in, then you know that you've had it. So they shouldn't be expensive at all. So here I am going to finish this. So there we go. And here, and I leave that and finish on the other side. I hope you guys are actually enjoying this. Um, if you have any questions, just keep asking them. I will do my best to reply. There we go. And we are going to finish off the mains. And so for my mains, I do them. So I found that uh, I increased the tension by 10%. Well, not necessarily 10%, so for example, I'm doing it at 26 pounds uh, for the mains. I will then up it to 28, um, which is the cross tension. And I tend to pull the last two together at once to actually try and re uh, minimize some of the single stress that this little poor string goes through um, if you do it individually. I do pull it twice um, just to make sure that they get all the tension they need. So actually, if you listen to this guy, so he's actually under a lot of pressure already. And then just to make sure my clamps don't slip, I add a, an additional flying clamp behind it so that there's no slippage on there. Okay. So here I would tie off the knots. So I think some stringers don't tie off their uh, mains knots immediately. Um, I do. So I just make sure that they're tight as little slippage as possible and then I do another oh crap this is what happens when you're talking <laughs> and stringing at the same time yep over under through one more and then release it there we go and then repeat the same thing on the other side One more little piece of string. Pull again. Hi, Yichin. Um, let me finish this and I'll read your comment. So what I use here, so this one you might actually see me use a lot in a lot of my stringing videos. Um, it's the string puller. So I don't use an awl um, at all for any of my stringing. Um, so I, I use the string puller to actually go across um, a lot of the um, shared holes and blocked holes. Um, and then they work amazingly well. So I've never had to use an awl to dig or poke or anything whatsoever at all. So none of that. There we go, main's done. 
Yes, hi Yijin. So yes, same principle machine, default frame out there, the surprise. Yeah. Oh yes, so this, so these guys here, yes, the side supports. Um, yes, so I'm not sure about eBay, but I got this <laughs> a long, long time ago um, from someone called Michal Chudek from Poland. So he was the first one that I, that we came across to actually see that he produces something like these um, instead of the usual K, K mounts, which were quite poor in actually, well, in blocking the holes really. So they don't do a very good job. Um, and then his worked an absolute treat. I think this is the second generation, but then this must have been many, many years ago now. Um, we found him on Badminton Central's forums, um, and that and that's actually where also I first came across AK, who was actually here. Um, and if you Google him, look him up, uh, you should be able to find him. I guess hopefully he's still making some. Um, yeah, so I think that that's actually all that I can actually say. Um, yes, AK is correct. My badminton store in Hong Kong. Yes, I've actually met Winston before. They they actually sell the load spreader. Um, so absolutely go and get them from there. Um, I think they do worldwide shipping as well, so you will have no problems getting that stuff shipped across anywhere in the world. So, yes, I'm really sorry, I can't read any, um, the your Russian <laughs> username profile. Um, do you end up string tension to outside temperature and out? Okay, um, no, unfortunately not. So I don't really um, change the tension to anything other than, so for example, if a person tells me they want it done at 27 pounds and then I'll tell them, look, I'll be doing it at 26 by 28. Um, and so far, so far I think having played in winter as well as over in, in the summer, yeah, I've not had the need to really change um, the tension up or down way too much at all. Um, so what, what do you think? Did you find a, a, a huge difference? Um, or a need to really have very different string tensions, say summer and winter, you know, like minus 10 to plus 30. Do you find that is a big change? Uh, how much did my string of machine cost? Yep, so I th um, so well obviously you can see there's a lot of modifications done. Um, initially, when I first started with my very first machine, it was actually a drop weight machine. And obviously this guy, the tension head here, um, it's the WISE 2086 machine uh, tension head. So that is an additional add-on uh, much later after quite a few years. Um, so I think you can actually buy quite a similar set to this guy now, um, probably just under, I would say eight, 900 pounds. Um, so obviously if you turn that, it's 1.3 US dollars to the pound, I guess, around. So you're looking at maybe 1200, something like that. Um, if you look around on my YouTube profile channel, um, you will actually see quite a lot of string and resources videos on there. I think I will have had links to some of the um, machines that you've talked about um, that you can actually see how much they cost <laughs> yes yes the k the k supports um mihail chudek so c h u d e k and mihail as in m i c h a l yeah so he's on well i initially found him on badminton central um so hopefully he should still be there um, otherwise, <laughs> someone else <laughs> might actually be able to help you. Okay, so we've gotten now on, all the way to the main uh, crosses. So as you can see, I pulled the first two together and then I've actually only weaved the first four to help me just get through the first section. Uh, and then I cut off all the remaining strings so that it doesn't Annoy me. Oops. Oh, there's someone at the door. There we go. And then I weave one ahead. So 
So I think the key to weaving is to stay as relaxed as possible. I've seen a lot of different techniques from, from a lot of very, very good stringers. Um, I personally ended up with using two of my uh, index fingers and just be really as relaxed as possible. Um, and just really lightly pushing the strings across. I think some strings are easier to weave than others. Uh, stiffer strings are actually nicer to weave. Um, and then very grippy strings. So for example, like if you have an aerobite, the red, uh, the, the colored aerobite, and then obviously it's the aerosonic on the crosses. Um, yeah, so they're very grippy. So they, they are slightly harder to weave. Oh, I think it's caught underneath. Some of the stuff will always get caught, which is quite annoying. However, it doesn't change. So um, on the flying clamp situation, sometimes I do use them. Um, I would only recommend the Yonex flying clamps if you ever are using any, because I think they are quite good. Um, Ah, okay, for myself, winter court temperatures, yeah, um, yeah, so for me, no, I've, I've never really changed the tensions whatsoever, so I think in winter, um, in our side here, we get down to about five degrees, sometimes very close to zero, but in the halls, uh, we have, we have heated halls, so although they are not, you know, they are not the same temperatures outside, but they will still be quite cool, um, no, so I have not, uh, changed the tensions for myself whatsoever. Um, I do find that strings do last slightly less. Um, they do break a bit more um, in winter, obviously, because cold air, brittle, and yeah, one miss hit is gone. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Up at four four pounds by summer. Wow. Um, yeah. So no, I. So I personally play around um, 27, 28 pounds. It, de it depends, you know, sometimes um, you got bad patches <laughs> or when you've not trained or, you've, you know, when I'm feeling not as good. Um, so I go down to around 27. I, I personally do struggle a lot with very soft strings. So anything that's under 26, I tend to struggle with. Um, so I really enjoy playing with stiffer, more responsive strings. So that's why I like thinner strings as well, uh, grippy, thinner strings. Um, but yeah, adding four pounds on is quite a lot. So I think if you go from 27 to 31, they'll feel quite differently as well. Um, yeah, AK, I think we can, I think we can look at organizing something like this. Uh, I think hopefully some other people might actually also be interested in, in doing something like this. Um, well, obviously this is only the first live stream session. We might be doing more. Um, I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys like to see this? <laughs> you know, if, if you guys like to see something like this, obviously say yes in the chat or, you know, we can organize something. Um, obviously mindful of the time differences where everyone's coming in. Could be good morning, good evening, good afternoon to every one of you. Oh yeah, good question. Where are you guys actually watching from? Oh. Um, Yes, I'm going to try and read your original nickname as close as you can pronounce. Padal Shik Nezd Nezbi. <laughs> wow, that's actually good. Hopefully, I, I didn't pronounce it too wrong. Padal Shik Nezbi Nezbi. Wow, I'm learning something new every day. Um, no, thank you guys for for tuning in and taking the time to chat. So I think, yeah, um, I find that I, I learn a lot watching other people's string. Um, I've certainly watched a lot of videos previously of how um, AK, Alan Kakanami, who's, who's in the chat here, watching him string. Um, I bumped into him at the All Englands, um, at the World Championships before as well, when he was um, down stringing for the pros. So yeah, so AK is certainly a master pro stringer. 
that has done all the biggest tournaments all around the world. So yeah, I do actually really enjoy watching him string. Um, yeah. Hello, Felix from Germany. Yes, it's good to good to have you here. Yes, obviously, AK, it's a, it's a bit late on your side <laughs> as you're actually coming in from Japan. So yeah, so wow, it's really, really good having so many people from different continents tuning in. So hopefully, AK, you're not seeing a shocker on here. Um, hopefully, I'm doing you justice <laughs> after watching a lot of your videos. So as, as you can see, I'm doing, um, I pre-weave one ahead. And obviously when I'm pulling my strings across, um, I make sure I push them so that they don't cause uh, friction and burn across because obviously strings are really thin nowadays and they burn and they, you know, the, the surface, they crack. Well, it's not crack, but then you damage the surface quite easily. So now we are getting quite close. Yes, pedal shake. So court temperature is so important that 26.8 ultimate cross. I shouldn't say it didn't play at all. Yes. Oh, it could be the racket as well. Um, yeah, the Astrox 88D must feel quite different to the. I'm assuming Ashway 68TX. That's that's one of their rackets, isn't it? Um, but yeah, so that might feel quite different. Um, from the rackets as well. I think generally the Yonex rackets do have a slightly more solid core feeling um, compared to other brands. I think other brands might have a slightly more hollow feeling, but then obviously that is quite a personal preference. Yep, so this is one of the issues with soft strings, as you can see. So this is quite soft, and now, so obviously I'm trying to go through a blocked hold and it is not going through, so I'm gonna snip that little head. So we get a slightly new, sharper, pointy point. And let's push it again. There we go. So this guy's out. And let's just grab the string from the other side. Be very gentle. And here we go. Tension. Um, yeah, so leaning 3D caliber 900i. Yeah, so unfortunately, I, I don't have a I don't have a source for uh, leaning rackets yet. So um, it's something that I would I would like to, to review as well other rackets. Um, so it's something that I will keep in mind. Thank you. So hello from down under. Wow, <laughs> must be quite late for you guys. Um, good to have you here. Um, thank you for the support, as usual. And Stotch, um, what do you think about the Astrox? Is it 100 ZX for tall player? Well, I think you'll like it, don't you? Um, have you tried the ZZ um, instead of the ZX? So the ZZ, obviously, it is more expensive, um, unfortunately. Um, but I think they might have used slightly better materials and slightly uh, more advanced factoring as well. Um, well, yeah, so if you have a strong arm, and I think the ZX is, is solid, isn't it? I, I thought it felt solid when I tried it. Um, it's just, it's a strong person's racket. Um, whereas for me, I could get away with a bit more um, with the ZZ. Um, only in 4U though, so I couldn't, I didn't really, or I couldn't really hack it with the uh, 3U version, so for you for me but yeah i think you'll love it um if you can try try the rackets first or you know um from your from the players from your badminton club or uh, at the shops if you can try it first um otherwise you should like it <laughs> on based on paper hello siam sitker good to have you here with us So almost finish it. Oops. There we go. And from time to time, I just loosen up the knots on the string. So yep, so we're getting to the very top of the racket. Last few crosses.
Let's view process from here. Ah, 68TX is a string. Ah, okay. Yeah, I've not tried the the latest Ashaway strings uh, much at all, so I can't tell. Apologies for that. So it's the same string jaw bracket in my bag. Too much hold on the strings. Oh, wow. So too much hold as in when you're saying, does the, does the shuttle just sit on the strings and not pop out? Um, is it not as repulsive? What is your normal string in comparison to the Ashaway 68TX? Oops. Okay. So I think with more expensive machines, you get much better ergonomics. You get a lot more space around the area. Um, you get better mounting system as well. So obviously now you can see that these little strings are coming handy, so I don't have to really poke around. I just pull them and then uh, that creates a gap for me to pull the strings across. So yeah, so I think it's just little bits. But I guess if you're training or if you're learning how to use one, I think yeah, there's no there's no need to buy a five to seven thousand pounds machine um, just to train, unless you have a, a shop to practice in that you get a lot of rackets to actually get the return of investment. There we go. Love from Sweden. Oh, hello. Yes. Good to have you. Um, much love from the UK. Okay, we're on to our last string. So obviously here the downside is, so if you use a load spreader, you can actually see sometimes it will actually block some of the some of the final strings. So if the strings are actually coming up really, really high, like this one here, you can actually see that it blocks some of that. Um, that's the unfortunate side of things. Um, however, I would rather protect the racket um, than not, because obviously you do not want uh, your rackets breaking or causing any damage to the frame whatsoever. So yeah, that's quite important. So it's something, a little bit of sacrifice, I believe, to the string tension, which you can compensate um, to make sure that they actually go okay. So my friend, he likes this version of 27. Um, so we'll keep it that way. There we go, all strings are out. And then I, again, pull the last two together, but double pull just to make sure there's not too much stress on the frame. That's one time. And that's two. And then sometimes the clamps can't get in. And from there, I would grab a flying clamp to do that. So as you can see, yes, it is quite crowded here. There's a lot of stuff going on. And we have quite a lot of remaining string. So I'm gonna snip this little bit here. Leave that there and turn it there. Quick question, where do you focus on when I weave? So, um, what do you mean focus on? Speed or accuracy or do you mean where do I look? Or, um, I, I certainly have a lot more easier time stringing only one ahead. So for example, one ahead meaning if I'm tensioning, say, the first string, and then um, I would only weave one ahead uh, because it's a soft weave, so that's a lot easier. Um, if it's more than one ahead, then it's um, a hard weave, and then that sometimes creates a lot of friction, um, which is really hard, hard to, to weave, and it's not smooth, so I don't enjoy that. We want to hear string sound. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the whole point, right? <laughs> so hang on, let me finish. So yep, strings are off, strings are off. So I tend to loosen the first two, top two a little bit, and then I loosen the top one. And then make sure, well, I tend to make sure that the racket handle is pushing against me a little bit. So when I release all six, the racket doesn't fall off. Um, and you take it up, there we go. So, let, so let's listen to the string sound. So final corrections, just to make sure. 
sounds good. I enjoy that. <laughs> um, so what do you look? Um, well, we've got a second racket, so I'll get I'll get to your question, AK, very quickly when I when I get to um, do my crosses again. So we've got a second racket, so that's racket one done. So we now have racket two. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to answer your question then, AK. Um, hang on for a little bit. Let me quickly put this in before answering a few more questions. Okay, so do you prepare your next rackets, racket grommets, so they fit, fit much better? National 17 grommets were moving too much. Ah, okay, so I'm assuming that your grommets are actually, what you mean is um, when you're pulling string across, the grommet comes out. If that's what you meant, then the grommets that you are, you are putting in are slightly below their size, so um, you might need to get better fitting ones as well. So um, I have a box of grommets, actually. Where are they? So I tend, tend to use a whole box of grommets. Um, so yeah, so for example, I get something like these, which has almost any single size, every single size of grommets, um, which for almost, I would say, 99% of badminton rackets would fit in all of them, including the T-joint ones as well. And then so, yeah, they fit really well and you just need to find the, the correct size. I think if you're finding that when you pull, the grommets pop out, then they're not the right size or they're undersized really. Um, so yeah, so if you grab something like that, so hopefully that will be able to help you solve that question. Let me quickly mount these before answering more questions. Yep. So when I mount the uh, the supports, they're always just finger tight. You're not supposed to squash them. They're only, only, only ever finger tight. So with slightly less high-end machines, sometimes, you know, the, 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 what's it called? The knobs are, are not as smooth. So I do need to make sure that they actually are finger tight. Okay, let me answer a few more questions. AK can answer two, because I'm not moving the string too fast. And burn both grommets. Focus on the hole I'm going into. No, I don't look at my weekend. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I don't really focus much on a specific thing. I just, I just do it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, where's the second pack of string? Yep. So we're still going with the same 66 Ultimax string um, for the second pack. Let me unweave the string again. Yeah. So. I'll get to the focusing on the on the weaving bit when I get to it next time round. Um, I think yes, I think I can understand what AK is saying. Um, AK is saying maybe perhaps when weaving at the end, tr trying the string through the hole instead of you know it, the string going everywhere. Oh, that's a bad, that's a bad one. Right, I'll re remount it. Yep, maybe this is why we shouldn't be talking too much <laughs> when we're doing a string job. Finger tight, finger tight, finger tight. Yep, good. Okay. Uh, do we need different tensions on mains and crosses? Yeah, I would advise absolute yes. Hi, Alif. Yes, um, the, I think the reason being, so for example, uh, the reason why we need different tensions for straight and cross, mains and crosses. So if you pull, say, 25 on the mains, so your racket generally would go like this. And that's why we have the side supports to stop it from going too much the other way. And because when you're weaving as well, you would want additional tension to then pull it pull the frame back into its original frame. So I would advise um, it's a yes. And what I normally do is I would do two pounds additional. So for example, this racket, I'm doing 26 on the mains and 28 on the crosses. Um, I believe Yonex do recommend 10% uh, increase in tension for, for the crosses. 
Um, so yeah, so some people would, would like to be really, really accurate. So they would be happy to have, you know, 0.5 or 0.6, um, but I generally, I do it in two pounds. So all the, all the grommets were original Yonex single hole ones moved too much. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, I've never really come across a lot of huge grommet movements unless they, they are on quite the entry level models. Um, generally, the, the high end models um, don't have this issue, but it could be also be maybe uh, sometimes when the racket and racket are really, really old, they might also have that. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I have had rackets which, for example, like you said, I pull, I pull and then the, the grommets do pop out. I think there's nothing more that you can do um, by pushing the, pushing the grommet in when you tension, when the string is under tension. Uh, once the string is under tension and once it goes onto the next hole, they then generally stay put quite well. So yeah, unfortunately that might be the only uh, advice I could give at this very point. Um, okay, let me answer a few more questions. Uh, focus your finger, yeah. So my mind just... <laughs> yes, I think sometimes, um, AK, I understand what you mean by mind drifting. Um, it is good to have music on sometimes, so so it's not as boring, I guess. Um, but we will have a copyright issue if we play music on the stream, so unfortunately no music. Um, Daniel, hello, good to have you here. Do you know about the special leaning aeronaut rackets with a special square grommet? No, unfortunately not, so I've not had a chance to actually uh, play with any of them um, or even had a look at have a look at one of them because obviously we've not been playing badminton we've not been back to playing badminton very long at all um, and I think leaning rackets in the UK aren't generally as popular as some of the other brands so no I haven't had the chance to see that I'm sorry um, what do you think about when we achieve <laughs> yeah I, I wouldn't lie uh, sometimes I do think about food <laughs> Things like cheeseburgers, absolutely. I'll let you, I'll let you know um, what I'm thinking when I'm weaving in a, in a few minutes' time. Okay. Yes, 10%. Matched formula, cross me. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Um, having higher tensions on the cross, crosses do pull the racket back into its original frame shape. So yeah, I would really recommend all stringers do it. Speak of the devil, look at this. <laughs> there's a missing, there's a missing grommet here. When I expected the racket, it was actually there. Wow. Speak of the devil. There we go. Time to rescue, <laughs> time to rescue this grommet. It must be on the floor somewhere. However, I'm gonna go straight into this one. Nope. Nope, that's way too short. There we go. So yeah, so we found a replacement grommet that fits exactly into the frame and it's the right length as well. So hopefully you guys can actually see. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, um, but yeah, so Grommet five was missing, so where did it go? Must be on the floor. Yep, so this is what happens when we're talking too much. <laughs> so it's important to have um, some, sort, some sort of backups, backup grommets uh, in case things happen. Yeah, using all. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't, I don't, I don't use an awl. Um, so when you say you use an awl to fit the grommet, does that mean that you widen the hole, 
from the inside of the frame um, into into the grommet, into the holes. So one of the problems with fat fingers it's quite hard to pull on the strings without actually using a tool. Alright, so now we're done with the first four mains. So what I, I think, if you guys have any questions, so sometimes what you see me so um, on tension and then I put my finger across like this here, right behind the clamps, as soon as I release tension, this is a very quick check for me to see if the uh, string is slipping or not. Um, so it's really, it's just a very quick check um, for me to know if the string is slipping. So sometimes after quite a few string jobs, um, your clamps you need to do maintenance on it so for example here I'm just making sure that there's no slippage um, it's just a very very quick check once there's none you just yeah go ahead continue on dun, dun, dun. one in the grommet fit me up in the whole size ah Grommets don't fit well except for double holes. Oh wow. So what are we on? <coughs> so we're getting on to the jumping holes. Nice. Yeah, I think the, the, the check-in for slipping, it's quite a subtle thing, but then if you catch it early. Um, it doesn't wreck a string job and that's, you know, for me, I, I want to make sure the tensions are um, accurate, I want to make sure that the strings aren't slipping, you know, so it's good. It's, it's just a little um, counter check to make sure that things are actually going how they should. So insert a little string on here. There you go. So I think there's, there's quite a few stringers out there. Um, what's the, well, I think what's the worst string job memory that you can actually think of, <laughs> if you don't mind sharing? Um, so, yes, AK, okay, yeah, you should try it. Um, it's just really subtle process, so it's just, finger on very close to the clamp and you release it and you can tell you can tell immediately that if the string is slipping or not um, that's really cool all right so let's go on so obviously if you're using high-end machines um, the the clamps are also better much better actuation there's a lot smoother um, whereas, whereas with slightly less expensive machines, you know, I think the clamps, we've upgraded the clamps before as well. So the clamps are actually uh, newer clamps. So yeah, you just got to replace the stuff as you go along. Um, with each little, little upgrade, for example, the side support upgrade was absolutely uh, so worth it. It was incredible with the amount of hassle um, that it saved. So on my other machine, um, I hope I've also I also have a, an automatic rail. Um, so I think an automatic rail means that as soon as you open the clamp, the clamp goes down. It automatically releases the uh, bottom side of the rail. So saving you a few actions, I guess, um, and that saves you time. So over so many strings, so many tensioned strings it does add up, so if, if, if it saves you a few seconds each time, it will end up to minutes. So. Okay, let's fit those. And last two again. 
get the tension up, double pull. Uh, my first racket. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> I remembered my first racket when I was stringing. Um, I think that took me what at least an hour and a half, and and that's after watching tons of videos and thinking I'm ready, I'm ready for this. So yeah, I don't feel too bad now. <laughs> um, let me see, string slip. Ooh, yes. <laughs> But to be honest, I think first racket, two hours 40, that's actually okay. Um, because I think we all start somewhere. That's, that's actually really good. Okay, there we go. Release that, release that. Let's put one little last string in. Mm -hmm. Make sure they're not catching each other. Twice. Um, bottom up method. Yeah, so I am doing bottom up, um, bottom up method uh, later on. So on my, I what? Yes. So on my crosses, I do them bottom top. Um, yeah. So I will start my crosses on the bottom before pulling them up to the top. There we go. Okay, so we're getting we're getting to the crosses very soon. There we go one extra single half hitch for security. Um, I've never had a knot fail on me ever before, so let's keep it that way. <laughs> um, Okay, so let's cut the tip of the string so it's sharp and a lot easier. Okay, so um, just wondering the tension, you pull across the first two crosses. Yeah, so um, all my cross tensions are exactly the same. So currently um, the racket is strung at 26 mains, 28 cross. So my first crosses uh, they were all going to be they're all going to be done at the same tension so I pull the first two crosses together at the same time um, but yeah they're going to be done at 28 so no change in tension whatsoever okay let's get the starting knot quite tight yep I'll, I'll, I'll answer a few more questions once I finish with this knot Okay, so let's get some questions. So, uh, bottom top, swing initial turns block. Wow, <laughs> removing the racket um, when halfway through swinging. So that must be a scary one as well. Okay, so what? Yep, no problem. Bottom top, try swinging crosses from the middle. Ah, is that middle fifty fifty? 50-50 method. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really try that before. Um, I thought, I thought that might not be a good idea, so I haven't done those. Yes, I think one thing. Yes, AK. One thing that I can think about when I'm doing my crosses. So I, I've always wanted to make sure that when the rackets finish, when the racket is finished. N so when the racket is finished, none of the strings. Um, cross over each other so that was that was a thing for me that I wanted to make sure that all the all the cross strings that come out from the racket are always in line and they don't they don't trip over each other um, so that was the one thing that that I I'm quite particular about um, I think I've also developed a, a technique that helps me make sure that um, the strings always stay in line so for example my first cross that comes out I make sure it is on the bottom um, and then it's the same for the next string that goes in. So those are those are the things that I I look out for. Um, but then sometimes because of the how how used the grommets are, 
um, they still trip up over each other. Um, that's unfortunate. But yeah, it's something that I try and look out for to make sure all the strings are actually in the same. So yeah, so um, things I focus on. I do try and get get this, uh, the strings to weave in all the way through in one go. <laughs> I try and do that. Um, not very successful. I guess um, it gets a lot easier when we get on to three, um, three or nine o'clock, but generally I have to do it twice. So I think I start on here and get all the way, the, finish the last two, I have to reset and redo it. There we go, third hole, being a bit tricky. A lot of patience. You just need a lot of patience. Um, yep. So, yeah. Ah, another thing that I try and focus on: um, not misweaving. So try and not make any any mistakes. Um, so sometimes we can make mistakes. So this guy is trying to come out here. So for example, yeah. So, so. This guy com comes out here, when it goes into this string, I'm quite certain that it's going to have a cross. So I try and not do that, although the easy way out might be that. Oh, sorry guys, the mic dead cat has come off. <laughs> so I think this one has to come out on the top this time around. Answer a few more questions. Um, Prince Axis 64. Oh, that must be a really old racket. Never come across that. Can you can you close your eyes and weave? Uh, I'm not sure I'll do a good job. I can try. Oh, strings caught underneath the machine. <laughs> yep. So because of how tight the strings are against that, so I take my time and pull through strings don't burn so you just gotta take it easy um, thinner strings do not quite a lot easier compared to thicker strings so you just gotta take a time it'll be fine so as you can see when you pull across, it's like trying to wrap a ribbon around. So yeah, just take it easy. And I think this is also another reason why um, I don't really recommend um, pre-weaving a full racket um, before stringing. Because I think when you start, when you tension, um, a lot of knots will get in to the racket. And then if, you're, if you've already pre-weave, you are not going to be able to work out a lot of the weave. So that's why I don't do that. It's probably faster if you pre-weave, but it's not accurate or it's not good. So not good. I don't do it. There we go. So now I can then untangle. You can see this mess from the tension. So yeah, so pull that all out. Hello, for the, for, the, for the people who's just joined us, welcome, welcome to the channel. Um, currently doing some badminton stringing, so hopefully there's quite a few stringers out here by the sounds, so hopefully you guys can learn something and we can all learn something from each other as well. I think referring back to one of the previous conversations um, in the chat, so another plus side of these side supports compared to the K ones are they allow me to be able to weave in or out and pull tension on depending on which side causes the least fr friction. So with the K supports, you've got no choice but to pull tension anyway. Uh, uh, sometimes 
they do pull across um, the other side, so and that's not cool. Yep, so here, yeah, I think one thing that I focus on, AK, is certainly not to have any mistakes. So yeah, so here, as you can see, both strings, one of the, so one of the grommets, as you can see, are actually bang on side onto the side support here. So I know, obviously, it's come out here, and this is the string I need to pull. But I know if I pull this, this is going to rub against the inside. So the positive side of this support is, if I pull here, it is going to be fine. And it is not going to rub across, as you can see here. So yeah, so it doesn't rub across the um, side support. So that's certainly one more big plus that I really enjoy um, from these side supports. Oops, come to the radiator. Um, hopefully one more thing um, that might help you guys is, so for example, you can see that my clamps, one of it's pointing on here, one of it's pointing there. So I think typically when I get it to maybe five or six um, crosses, I then angle the lever towards that side. So when I'm weaving, it doesn't catch. It's just little things, I guess. Um, but if it helps you speed up that two seconds per string, why not? So now, yeah, I turn it across. So I've got a lot more space on this side to weave. Yep, I cannot close my eyes and weave. <laughs> Do you know what? Let me try now on this one. Let me try it. Oh, there we go. Hello, it's gone, <laughs> certainly gone the wrong way. Nope, and I've certainly definitely missed a few holes because <laughs> closing my eyes don't work. Yep, there we go, two doubles under. No. <laughs> so yeah, so AK, I think that just proves your theory and that's why you're a master stringer because you can do this. look at the grommet widening thing because I think there's a grommet tool isn't it where you can actually insert the grommet and it flares the grommet from the inside out um, you know for example like the uh, shared holes on there oops and the shared holes on most rackets um, so I certainly look I certainly look into that um, for the future So why don't I follow the first four and last five crosses to be the same tension as the mains? Um, I think one of the reasons being, for me personally, um, the, last, the last five, certainly I don't want to reduce any tension um, because the knot, the, the knot uh, will, will lose quite a lot of tension from the knot. And then also um, when we come out and go into the, the knotting hole, so that little stretch of string will eat up so much tension um, that, you know, if we go a lower tension, it's, it's not going to be accurate at all. Um, and so I think that's why I, I don't do that. Um, and then also for the first starting crosses, um, I think it probably is the same reason, although this side on the outside is tensioned. Um, but because I'm tensioning the first two in one go, I historically, when I first there was a number of years I tensioned the very first string as well. Although none of my knots, my starting knot ever failed before, but I thought the frame might have been holding onto a lot of pressure at that very same point on its own. Um, if we were to tension, for example, uh, 32, 33 pounds of tension. Um, so from then I thought, right, maybe let's try two strings in one go, but double pull just to make sure that this guy has a consistent consistent tension on the very first string. Um, but yeah, I mean, also I'd, I've not had any manufacturer recommend that we do that. Um, you know, so if, if there are any, any stringers here um, who has a lot more information on that, uh, please do share with us because, you know, this is, this is a good platform for us to learn. 
No, you're not a home stringer. <laughs> Um, where can you get the side support? Yes, Felix. Um, so yes, so this side support came from a guy called, I'm going to call it Michal, M-I-C-H-A-L. So I think he's Polish. Michal Chudek. Chudek. Um, we f I found him on Badminton Central's forums. So I think in one of the stringing forums so many years ago now, um, probably maybe even 10 years ago, maybe more. Um, and he was the first one to actually make these to suit the Pros Pro machines. So obviously this is a Pros Pro TX700, but has been adapted with, a, with an electronic uh, tension head, the WISE electronic tension head. Um, initially when this one started, it was a crank machine. Um, the other one I had was a Challenger, which was a drop drop weight machine. So, so yeah, and it has been an absolute brilliant piece of investment. And I, mean, I don't think it was expensive as well. Um, so yeah. It's really well built, really solid. Um, I remember previously um, the, what's it called? These plastic or rubber casings were actually slightly different. And I think these might be the upgraded ones. And perhaps it might have evolved a lot more from now because it's been such a long time. But I would really recommend you getting something like that if you have the traditional K side supports, uh, which are not very user friendly, in my opinion. Wow, there's an official Victor guide. Um, one of the last videos. Yeah, so um, I think with Stringers, maybe AK can, can give us a bit more uh, insight into this as, as he's been uh, an official Yonex Stringer before for so many years and has done so many tournaments all around the world. Um, you know, is, is that something that, that they pass on down to uh, Stringers? Um, who run the tournaments and stuff like that. Does your next Japan's R&D stringing team come down and tell you guys to do that? Yeah, so if you can find that Victor guide, um, you, can, you can put it in the chat here so we can all actually see that. go through hole let's pull that out a little bit oh god I've pulled it out <laughs> I've pulled the wrong string um, yep. so. okay There we go. And locked holes. Just catch up my shoe. Um, hello, Andrew. What what tension do they recommend? Do you recommend for a Voltric racket? Um, it depends. What tension do you like to play at? <laughs> you know, so it it's all it all it's all dependent on the player. Um, you know, so some people prefer high tensions, some prefer prefer low tensions. Personally, I prefer around 27, 28 pounds in tension. Um, some other people do prefer slightly less. So it's a, it's entirely up to you. If you are wondering if your racket will survive that tension, um, it depends on what model it is. So if it's a higher end model. Yeah, they can take high tensions, no problem, um, all the way up to the early 30s, mid 30s, depending on the model. But yes, if it's a slightly lower end model, um, then you might have to be a bit more careful with that. So I made a mistake early on by pulling the little string out, so I'm going to have to... Um, yeah, so, yeah, so there might be... Yes, AK, okay, so... They might uh, might be doing something that's slightly different right now. There we go. Oh, the OG original Z Force Z Force One. 
Oh yeah, that, that racket will have no issues taking um, <laughs> high tension if it's the white and the green one that I can remember. There we go. A lot of knotting done. There we go. Yes, AK, really focusing on making sure there's no mistakes and being able to get out the opposite end <laughs> on my weaves. More power. What string do you currently use, Andrew? Right, so this one's a bit tight. So I'm using the starting clamp as a leverage, uh, as a lever to pull the little um, insert string that I've put in early on. So because some of the grommets have been used quite a lot and they have a little very deep groove where the previous string used to sit. Um, so yeah, so using the starting clamp as a lever does help significantly in trying to get that out without pulling your hair out. I just literally said that. It's not And sometimes, if they really struggle to work, um, you can cut a fresh new tip on the string if the if the string is slightly old. And try again. And you need a lot of patience. I can see the tip, it's not coming out. <laughs> okay, I thought I didn't have, didn't have much. Fine. completely blocked. Wow, this guy's not coming out. So what techniques, what techniques do you guys use to get really bad blocked strings out?
You can see that the little string has even creased. Oh, this is... Right. Pushing the helper string the other way. Yeah, you should try that as well. It is so tight. So, and so I think, yeah, this is one of the issues when you're doing quite high tensions, or well, slightly higher tensions, and the grommets are actually, um, it's got a very deep groove on the other end. And it's actually on the same side. Aha. Come on, just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Oh, there we go, he's out, he's out. One minute. He's out. Whew, Jesus. <laughs> um, can you grab a wide string, go with starting clamp? No, strings out. And so let me show let me show you let me show you guys why. And this is the issue. So let me try and zoom in just a little bit more if I can. Let me zoom in just a little bit more if I can. So yeah, so you can see this this little grommet here. So this guy is actually so you can see his groove that's actually been covered by the current string, um, the mains string. So this guy here, you can see, so the groove is actually so deep. And when I put my little helper string in there, when you try and pull it up, like <laughs> you can see then, so this is 20, 26, 28 pounds. And it is so hard to actually move any of the string whatsoever at all. So yeah, so you just gotta have a lot of patience. And then and that's why helping. So and that's why using, using a sharp, fresh, freshly cut um, string, starting string head does help quite a lot. So yeah, you do need some patience. Hopefully you guys actually, I'm relieved that I've got the string out as much as I do. <laughs> um, right, let's get back to tensioning. So you can actually feel how tight the how tight the the strings are um, from the friction, and by just pulling it, it's a lot harder to pull across because of how much um, grip there are, how tight it is, and so that's why if you don't use an a higher tension to pull your crosses, you're always going to have issues um, that your rackets will probably come out egg shape or something, um, or very round, because the mains are pulling it tighter than the crosses. So, yep. Okay, now that we've got the knots out, let's do this last one. So, with Racket strings getting thinner and thinner and thinner, and tensions generally going higher over the years. Um, flimsy, very, very soft strings are a lot harder to string uh, compared to, say, a tennis racket string, which is a lot stiffer. Um, so, yeah, so a lot of respect to a lot of badminton stringers. Oh, wrong tool.
and generally the these slightly more complicated ones don't happen um, at the start or at the middle they tend to only happen at the very end of your racket forgot to mention zoom out Same issue with this guy. Guy, go again. Yeah, sometimes it's not that. Um, so sometimes it's not that we don't want to pull down. Um, we generally can't because there's not there's no more space for us to actually um, pull down on. It's so hard to put pressure on things when there's no space for it. I'm gonna have to try and cut a bit more string. Thank God this is a pack. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's the whole set. So as you can see, same racket. Um, first racket, super easy, super smooth. And then you get onto the second racket and it's slightly a bit more complex. But we did get it out eventually. I think that this backs up quite a few of your points. Um, fresh garments are nice. Too long. And we are done. So let's cut this. Put this in the bin. There we go. Let's listen to that. Sounds good. Let me also try and see if I can put a quick stencil on. Uh, where's my little box? Upwards slightly. you align it correctly on both ends let's do the second racket there we go second racket so I generally tend to have the logo facing the right way when I'm doing the top one
Turn around, repeat. So So I think we've got two rackets done. So yeah, so I think my friend will be very happy that he's got his rackets done. And let me quickly turn you guys back up. So yeah, so I hope you guys really did enjoy the um, restring session. Um, thank you for Thank you for staying through the whole process. Um, yeah, I really enjoy seeing the comments and the questions that, that you guys are actually posting on the, um, what's it called? On the chat system. Um, AK, do you really need to flip the Victor stencil? Yeah, I did. Is that, why not? Why not? Oh, <laughs> I, go, I get what you mean now. Yes, because both of them look the same, isn't it? Regardless of which direction they are. But yes, it's a, it's a habit from the Yonex ones, isn't it? Uh, because yeah, the Yonex ones, if you get it wrong, then you're getting two sides of the same thing. But yes, good one. Um, I get what you mean now. Uh, a few more a few more questions. Hi, Alec, Doom. I should try and get a better machine. Very old for CUDA crank out machine, that's two point. Yeah, so um, check check some of the videos in my, in my comments, um, in my stringing videos. You know, um, there's some links in there that you can actually go look at some of the some of the machines. Um, that will give you give you much better much better um, thought process. You know, and then also considering your own budget as well. I think that's that's quite a crucial crucial consideration. You know, um, no, thank you, AK. Thank you, everyone who's actually joined us here today. Um, it's been really fun, and hopefully we'll be able to do something again, uh, more rackets soon, and hope to see you guys soon. So yeah. Um, next video is going up quite, so quite soon, so obviously stay tuned, make sure you subscribe for that, and thank you again for the support, and I will see you guys all next time.